Welcome to MashiToots. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about how to edit elements in Canva. For this purpose, I have already opened up a new Canva project and I named it how to edit elements in Canva. Now, first of all, let me give you an overview about the different elements that you can find in Canva. In Canva, all elements can be found here under the Elements tab here in the left sidebar. In fact, Canva did some pretty substantial changes in one of their last updates as far as displaying elements goes. Under elements here, you can now almost find everything that Canva has to offer. So you can find lines and shapes, graphics, photos, videos, audio, charts, tables, frames and grids in here. Before it used to be like that, that photos for example and videos could only be found by accessing a different tab here. In fact, we still have a photos tab here and a videos tab. And if you click on one of these, for example, you will only see photos in there. However, these photos can now also be found under photos here inside of the elements tab. So that said, let us now go over all of these different elements and let's see how you can edit them. We will start off with graphics. I have already added a couple of graphics that can be found in the elements tab here under graphics. To display all of these graphics simply click here on see all. Now the interesting thing about graphics is that not every graphic can be edited in the same way. However, there are some basic edit functions that are available for all graphics. And to access these edit functions, all you need to do is to click on one of these graphics and then here in the top toolbar, you will see the different edit options. So the basic edit functions for each graphics are the flip function, the animate function and the crop function. With the flip function you can simply flip your graphic horizontally or vertically. With the animate function you can animate your graphic by either choosing an element animation or a page animation. And with the crop function you can simply crop your graphic and choose what part of the image is actually used and shown. Now on top of that for every graphic you can also use the edit image function which lets you change the overall appearance of your graphic by using different Canva apps such as Duotone, Color Mix and Pixelate. However, it needs to be said that the edit image options here are very limited and won't let you really change the appearance of your graphic from the ground up. For example, if you would like to change the color of your graphics by using the edit image option here, you will see that this is very limited and you can just simply work with what Canva gives you. For example, if you would like to use the duotone effect, you can go here to see all and then you will see the different colors that you can choose from here, but you won't be able to choose whatever color you want. You could simply take one of these here, but if you would like to have a different color here, you can't use a hex code, for example, to get that done. However, this brings us to the next point as far as editing elements goes in Canva, which is changing the color of these elements. Whenever you will click on an element, you will notice that here in the top toolbar, sometimes you get a lot of different colors and with these color squares, you can actually change the colors of your graphic. However, what is really important to understand here is that it is completely up to Canva which part of the graphic can be adjusted. So that means that for some graphics you will get five color blocks here which means that you can change all the five colors of this graphic but for other graphics such as our Monstera leaf here we actually have no color squares here at all which means we can't simply change the color of this Monstera leaf here by using these color squares. So here the only way we could actually change it is to go into edit image and then use one of the limited options that we have here by using one of these apps. Whereas for this graphic here, when you actually click on one of these five colors, you will then be able to choose any color here. And by clicking on that first color square here, you would also be able to choose the exact color that you would like to use. And you could also input a hex code here, which means you can basically use any color that exists. Then we also have animated graphics such as this one here. For animated graphics in Canva it's usually like this that you can't change the color at all. For these elements what is typically available are just the basic functions crop, flip and animate as discussed before. 
And then I have also added these two graphics here. This is just to show you that it really depends on the graphic, what is available as far as edit options. So when you click on this one here, you will see that we just have the basic options here and there's just one color block. So for that one, when you click here, you can just adjust the basic color of this element. And that's about it. The same here for that graphic on the left. So that is how you edit graphic elements in Canva. Let us now talk about the next element, which are photos. Photos are actually not a classical Canva element because they have their own tab here in Canva's toolbar and they're also very special as far as the edit functions go. When you actually click on a photo on Canva, you will see more or less the same options that we have seen here for our graphics. However, as far as the edit image option goes, there is actually a big difference. When you have a photo and then click on the edit image option, you will then see that you actually have many more options appearing here than it is the case with graphics. Most importantly, you will see that you have a BG remover function here and an adjust function. When you click on adjust, you will then have many options that you can change as far as the brightness, contrast, saturation, tint, blur, and many more. And it's important to understand that these options are only available for photos in Canva. And that is actually the biggest difference between photos and graphics in Canva. These very useful options here are only available for photos but can't be used for graphics. So for example, if I would like to make my photo black and white, I could simply put the saturation here to minus 100 and immediately I will get a black and white version of my photo. Also, if you would like to use your photo as a background, you could, for example, blur the background by using this fader here and I will just put it to maybe 20 and you can see our background is now blurred and in case you would like to use some text on it, it's always a good idea to blur the background at least a tiny little bit. Then I have also briefly mentioned the background remover function here, which is another great feature of Canva. However, it needs to be said that this is a Canva Pro feature only. Let me just quickly illustrate what the background remover feature can do for you. For that purpose, I'm actually going to choose another photo here from the Photos tab. Maybe this one here. I'll just drag and drop that inside of my project. I will then make sure that the photo is selected and go into edit image. And then when you click on background remover, the background of the image will get completely deleted, which is extremely useful because like this, you could use this woman or whatever else is in the foreground on top of other images. In order to be able to move it around freely, what you would need to do is right click it and then select detach image from background and you will then see that you can move that around freely. So that means that um, under photos here, I could choose something else um, for, for the background. For example, I could drag and drop this beach here, for example, and you can then see that now I have my woman on top. And like this, you can obviously create amazing looking thumbnails. Maybe you could add some text as well. And overall, this obviously just gives you a lot of freedom when working on your designs in Canva. On top of that, under edit image, you will also get some nice filters that you can use for your photos. Simply click on one of these and you will see that your photo will change accordingly. That's also something you don't have for graphics, for example. And on top of that, you can also apply some shadows or you can even put your photo into a frame such as a laptop frame. And that's it, that is how you edit photo elements in Canva. Now let us talk about the next element in Canva, which are frames. You can find frames by first going to elements here in the left sidebar and then simply type in frames. And you will then see a lot of different frames that you can choose from. I have already added one frame here. I might add another couple. And what you can do now with these frames is you can simply put photos in these frames. So you could either click here on photos in the elements tab, or you can also directly access the photos tab from here. And then you can simply drag and drop photos into these frames. Oh, 
One thing to note here is that using frames in Canva is actually the only way to make a picture round in Canva. So whenever you would like to have a round picture or any other shape for your photo except a normal shape such as the shape that is given here under photos which is usually just really um, a, a rectangle in some form then you would have to make use of frames and you could choose a circular frame like this one here and obviously whenever you put a photo in that circle it will be rounded like this or let's have a look under elements what other frames we have you could also choose something like this here I'll just make that a bit smaller and you could drop another picture in there to get some other interesting shape in your Canva project. That said, let us now move over to the next Canva element, which are grids. Grids actually work in the very same way as frames. So that means that you can choose one of these lovely grids here from the elements tab, and then you could simply drop some photos in these grids. And this will obviously be helpful in dividing your Canva projects in different subsections. Also, once you drop your photos into those grids, you still have the option to change the position of your photo inside of that grid. So for example here in this grid we can see that this poor woman here got her head cut off. So we can simply fix that by double clicking on that grid and then we can reposition this photo so that the whole head here is visible. However, I forgot to mention that this can also be done here with the frames. So here as well when you double click on it you can still adjust the position. Now let's talk about lines and shapes elements in Canva. Under elements in Canva, to find these lines and shapes, you can simply write either lines or shapes. I have already added a triangle and a line here into my project. Now as far as shapes go, there's actually not that much to talk about. Uh, when you click on this triangle shape, for example, there's really nothing special here that you can do. You can just animate this shape in the same way you can animate uh, graphics or photos. However, for this triangle here, the only thing you can really do apart from that is you can change the size. And in this case, as you can see, there is not even a flip function for this shape. However, let me add some other shape into the project, maybe this square here. And that is where things get a little bit more interesting. As you can see, when you click on that shape here, you have two color blocks here, which in this case means that one color block here is to adjust the inner part of this rectangle, whereas the other color block lets us adjust the border of our rectangle. So I could change the border of that rectangle into red. And also with this shape here, you can see that we have different handles here around our shape, which which is pretty cool because in this case here we can adjust the size of our shape into whatever shape we want. So maybe we would like to use this shape as a background for our text and then obviously depending on how big our text is it's a great thing that we can adjust the text box accordingly with other shapes such as this triangle here that wouldn't be possible if you would like to put text on here. We can simply make it bigger or smaller, but we can't adjust it ho both horizontally and vertically as we can here with that shape here. So the key takeaway here for shapes is that the edit options that you're getting really depend on the shape itself, which was also the case here for our graphic elements, where we have seen that some of these elements are more customizable than others. Now as far as lines elements go in Canva, the important thing to note here is that you can make these lines smaller or bigger by simply left clicking here on the end of the line and you can adjust the length of these um, lines accordingly. And also another thing that you can do with these lines is you can change the line weight by making sure that the line is selected and here in the top toolbar you will have weight and style. So when clicking on weight we can easily adjust the line weight of our line and by clicking here on style we can easily turn this into a dotted line for example. So this probably doesn't seem like a big deal however this is something that Canva just recently introduced. Before that there was actually no way to change the, the overall appearance of a line. So not so long ago the line weight function and also the style function for lines didn't exist. So that's definitely another nice thing that Canva just blessed us with very recently. 
And as we are already talking about nice additions to Canva, we should now move over to the next element in Canva, which are tables. And the tables function is actually also a very new feature in Canva, which has just been introduced in one of the latest updates. Before that, making tables in Canva was actually a pain because you literally had to build a table from scratch by copying certain elements over and over again to get the overall look of a table. However, these days are now long gone because um, under elements you can simply um, write tables and you will get lots of different nice looking tables that you can simply drag and drop into your project and then use right away. In our case here I've already dropped a table into my project here and you can see now that you can simply press on one of these cells here and you can input text by double clicking on a cell. You can also easily adjust um, the size of these tables. You have some more basic functions such as um, table spacing. So you can easily adjust the table spacing for example. Then whenever you are clicking on a cell you can also change the border of that cell. As I did here I put some black border around the cell. To do that you could simply make sure that the cell that you would like to adjust is selected and then go here where it says border and there you can choose the border style in the almost same fashion as you can do that in Microsoft Excel for example and you can also change the border weight here so if you would like to have a thicker border you, you can adjust that here. So Canva makes it really easy to use tables now in their software. Last but not least as far as elements go in Canva we will also find charts. To find these charts under elements simply type charts and you will find all sort of charts that you can add to your design. I have already added a certain chart here to my project and as charts are very special elements in Canva whenever you click on a chart you will get some very unique edit options. So in this case here you can see that you can input the data for your chart right here which is a little bit special because usually inputting any kind of data in Canva always works in the project window directly. However, as far as charts go, whenever you would like to change the data of your charts, you would have to do that here on the left side. Also, a really nice feature here is that you can actually add data directly from your Google Sheets. So let's say you have some nice data in Google Sheets, then you could simply import that data into Canva and then visualize this data by using one of Canva's very own charts. I'm not going to go into more detail here as far as charts go. If you would like to have some more detailed explanation about how to use charts in Canva, please drop a comment and I will be happy to create yet another video on how to use charts in Canva. And that's really about it guys. This is how you edit elements in Canva. As you have surely noticed in this video I didn't talk about audio elements and video elements. The reason for this is simply that I don't consider audio and video elements to be normal Canva elements. As these two elements are actually a little bit more complicated, I actually created two separate videos for these. So one of these videos gives you a complete overview about how to edit audio in Canva. Whereas the other video gives you a complete overview on video editing in Canva. Please have a look at these videos in case you are interested in how to edit audio and video elements. And that's it guys, I hope you did indeed enjoy this video. If you did I would be most grateful if you could subscribe to my channel and in that case please don't forget to hit the notification bell. Have a great day guys, bye!